Mm. Hello and welcome. I'm Ellie Pascal, and this is the Radically Embodied You Somatic Journey. When your native instincts are allowed to flow free, who do you become? It's time to find out. Oh, it's time to bring back the deeply true you and let their unfettered impulses recreate our world. This is a space in which you will retrieve and remember pieces of your native soma. That's every level of who you really are. For freedom, for integrity, for vitality, for solidity of knowing, and for delight. And it gives me real joy to say that right now, here to support you in remembering your native Soma, we have Ema Stassin. Welcome, Ema. Thank you so much, Ali. It's so wonderful to be here. Mm, I'm so glad that you're here. Mm. And if you are not familiar with Ema's work, I will yeah, share some words now about where she's come from. What brings you to this moment, Ema? So Ema is a trainer and a soul-based coach, writer and storyteller. In Irish mythology, Ema is said to possess the six gifts of womanhood. And Ema sets out to expand and rewrite these ancient stories to bring her fullness and wholeness back in. Ema had a 20-year career in corporate financial services before, in 2004, taking an internal career change into corporate learning and development, a move which planted the seeds for her future entrepreneurial calling. At the beginning of 2017, Ema finally listened to the tug of her soul and the whispers of the witches to seek nourishment and expansion out, out with corporate. Ah, okay. Out of corporate and dove headfirst into entrepreneurship. Ema is a qualified group trainer, NLP master practitioner, and certified soul-based coach. This unique blend of who she is empowers her to be a transformational catalyst guiding clients on deep, poetic, meditative journey. And I have been enjoying what you've been putting out into the world, Ema, for a number of years now. And I'm so glad that we're connecting and that you're here. Me too. Mm -hmm. And absolutely the same in relation to you and your work. Mm. Cool, man. So this is a space in which the body comes first. So we're going to begin with a guided practice from Ema. Uh, so I hand over to you now and please tell us what we'll do and anything we need to know before we begin. Gorgeous. Thank you. So for this guided practice, it's an invitation to really sink in to you, to your body, exactly where you are right now. And I will be guiding you on a meditation journey to connect in with the Celtic tree of life and the Celtic medicine wheel. So I'm inviting in the beautiful energy of the Celts, of the Irish native lands to support us in all that we'll be exploring here. So getting comfortable where you are, if you want to change position, sit, stand, move about, just feeling your energy as it is right now. Noticing your breath, that in-breath that pause 
and that out breath. As your breath breathes for you. And the rise and the fall, the ebb and the flow. As you are breathed back to life over and over again. And connecting in with your feet. with the soles of your feet and bringing your attention and awareness to the sensation of your soles to soil, soles to earth, soles to the soul of this land. And imagine now that your roots, just like the trees, are unfurling from the soles of your feet and making their way down, 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 down into the earth, into the soil. And notice what comes to your awareness as your roots go down. They know exactly where to go to support you on this journey. And the earth connects us with our ancestors, with our roots and our lineage, with our tree and rock ancestors, the water and the fire. So as your roots make their way down and outwards to bring you lovely stability, just set the intention now to allow what wants to be released, to release with the support of your breath, your body, and can flow down through your roots to be supported and transmuted by earth. So let this unfold naturally, organically. to your unique rhythm. And in that releasing, notice any feelings of spaciousness or new energy can flow up through your roots. Imagining now that this energy is a golden kind of energy. The vibration of gold from the land. And imagine this energy flowing up through your roots, through your souls, making its way around your body. the inside of your body, infusing you with this noble, stable, elemental, gold, 
nourishing you. Let it flow now through your body, through your arms, your fingertips, up through your chest, your throat, your head, brain, your face. It's flowing throughout you and any excess can flow up and out through your crown and trickle or flow over the outside of you like a waterfall, golden waterfall. Or is gold in Irish? Let your gold flow through and out of you. And as that continues to unfold, I invite you to bring your attention to your crown. Perhaps you're wearing a crown, a golden crown of nobility, reminding you of your ancient self. And from your crown, roots will also unfurl and make their way up, up, up into the sky, into the cosmos. Going on their journey to connect with planets, stars, the star beings, the gods and goddesses that are here to support you at this time and always. And again, releasing what wants to be released through your cosmic roots. and drawing down the energy that you most need now. This cosmic energy connecting to the cosmic mother, allowing that to flow through you to merge with golden earthen energy connecting the earth mother. And as that continues to unfold, bringing your attention now to your body and noticing where this cosmic and earth and energy wishes to merge and meet within you. like a great dance of reclamation of who you are and who you are becoming. The truest version of you. And just notice any feelings or sensations that are alive for you right now. Or as we connect with our earthen and cosmic roots, you are connecting with the tree of life, the Celtic tree of life, roots, torso, trunk, and branches. And the, this infinite flow of energy to support you. You can say, I am the tree. I am rooted. 
I am the trunk. I am strong. I am the branches. I am cosmic roots. I am creativity. I speak my truth. My voice is strong as I sing my soul song in to the world. I am gold as my story continues to unfold. Taking another moment here. Noticing what else is asking for your attention. And what would you like to have happen now? When you're ready, you can invite your earthen roots to begin to wrap their way back up inside the soles of your feet. and invite your cosmic roots to do the same. Knowing that they're always here to support you. And you can bring some movement your fingers and your toes. And stretch out your body. And before you become fully awake and back in this space, You may want to take a moment to note down or write anything that came through you, draw or express this now. And noticing as you go about your day in your dream time, what other messages wish to come forth through your vessel in this dance with the tree of life. Mm, wonderful. And there's been such a, this beautiful invitation here from Ema to, if you feel to write down what's come through And yeah, I invite you to stay now throughout this, the rest of the session to stay present with what's arisen for you in that practice and what's alive in your body. You may use this beautiful term concept of the soul song and I'm curious, you know, I wish I could ask all of you what's arisen and whatever has arisen for you in this practice as you've experience both your cosmic and your earth and roots 
this deeply true you. You know, if you were to really let them sing that soul song throughout this session and into your day, how might that sound? Or how might it ask you to move? What might it tell you that you need? Who does it ask you to let yourself blossom and, and just be? This is when the radically embodied you is stepping out and that gets to be really easeful and, and delicious. Yeah. Ema, thank you for that journey. I, am, I, I find your delivery almost hypnotic in a very, very poetic and beautiful way. I feel like I feel like the the energy of the the Celtic stories is just coming through you. It's it's such a gift to be in, in presence with this and and receive that. And um, you know, we've just had this beautiful journey with with the tree of life and I'm curious for you, ha have you always been, well, we know from your bio, your daily life has not always been seeped in doing this kind of work. You came from somewhere else. And I know that you've been on something of a journey with your own body in that process. And I, I'm curious to know a bit, how was that? What, what's that been like for you? Yeah. Absolutely. It's, um, I feel it's really been a huge part of the story of my life. Recently, I was remembering my mother would tell a story of how when I was learning to walk and take my first steps, which is so symbolic in itself, how my parents would say, good girl, good girl. And I would raise my hands in the air and take my steps. So there was like this connection with, in order to rise up and take my steps in the world, I was the good girl. And I needed to be that good girl. It's like this conditioning, unknowns to all of us and to no fault to anyone, but the conditioning of being the good girl, following the well-trodden path, going through my life, education, and then just naturally landing in the corporate environment. It, then what became was this, like the word severance is coming really strongly. I was becoming more and more severed from my body from this primal ancient truth that is me <laughs> and I had pushed that away in favor of this it's like being cut off from the neck up and it's why I feel the space in my throat even now when I speak this truth that this is part of the healing work that I'm here to invite to flow through me and, and for others as well. So with this severance became a real strong reliance on my intellectual self, on my masculine side, to the detriment of the feminine me. I didn't invite her in a huge amount into my life, into my work. And probably a turning point in that was becoming a mum, giving birth <laughs> for the first time. And all, you know, that's like a whole other story of what that brought up and who am I now? And who am I becoming? And who do I want to be for my children in this mm -hmm. way? So that was like a whole other new 
awakening of healing and a whole other step on this realization of the good girl and who is she and who do I want to show up as now? Not even who do I want to because a lot of this journey, (laughs) there's been choice points for me and at the same time, there have been things that have flowed through that have been very surprising. <laughs> right. right. Oh, I love that you said that. Absolutely. I think that's the fun, difficult, beautiful, soothing, volcanic nature of this process of, of allowing the, our true selves out if we make that pact with our soul and with the universe. I think it will always be vitalizing and beautiful what arises, but it does not mean it will be without surprises or bumps. And I'm curious for yourself, how how did you find or channel the, whether it was courage or clarity or self-love or whatever it was you needed at these transition points when you moved, say, from one line of work to another or understanding yourself in one way into another how have you moved through those I love that question yeah so I I talked about this severance from my body a severance from my soul and yet at these key moments like the big change points in life that knowing became stronger than this apparent disconnection from my body. So for example, the the first knowing that comes to mind is this, after working for two years in my first corporate job in Dublin, that was so um, deadline driven and so busy. And some days I didn't even go to the toilet be honest during the working day because it was so like (laughs) amazing like and then after two years really it was like my soul was saying you cannot stay in this job or you will fully burn out and I had this real strong knowing that I wanted to leave and go traveling so that strong knowing then just propelled me forward to hand in my notice and take that step and travel the world for a year. So it's like in those key moments, the knowing became stronger than what I had pushed away or ignored for so long. Mm. You know, I hope that makes yeah. make sense. Or Oh, it makes complete yeah. sense. Yeah. I mean, my experience has been similar that of course the part of me that, that was very committed to my the plan that I'd made about how everything was going to go in my life was very strong so when these other knowings started to arise for me as sensations in my body I did everything I could to try and find another way to not go with those internal knowings for quite a long many years of course until I just had to just had to And it was so magical when I did, you know, it's been scary and hard, but it's been so beautiful and magical and connecting and vitalizing and and really everything that my soul came for. Um, But I still resisted it at points and I still do, you know, the layers keep coming off and my mind, bless her, she wants to feel in control. No. And I know that you have, I'm not sure if it's a general affinity or an affinity that's particularly come through for this session, but so Goddess Bowen. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you have a story. I wonder if that's feeling to come through you at this point. Yes. Yes. She is one of the first goddesses in this journey back home to myself, to my body, to listening to my soul song and what wants to be expressed. Bowen is one of the the first goddesses and 
I just, she makes me smile when I begin to feel into her energy and who she is. She, for the Celtic medicine wheel, the, the medicine wheel, she resides over the easterly direction at the time of spring equinox. So she is all about balance, the balance of the night and the day, the yin and the yang, this balance within ourself. And she's also connected with the cow as the cow goddess, but also the cosmos as the cosmic mother mm. and connected with the elemental of water. So the very, very, I feel her as a, a, quite a young kind of maiden energy presence with this flow of water and all the different aspects of how water can flow and surge and ripple and stagnate so she helps with that and I do have have a story that I can share about her and this story is rooted in her mythology on the Irish lands and what I like to do is then really feel into how does this resonate or vibrate through me and what kind of story playing with these th truths of the myths that were oral lore anyway in Ireland and then were written down in the um, 12th century, probably they began to be written down. So I like to play with these truths and connect in with my truth and how Bowen can support this. So I've used poetic liberty basically is what I'm saying. If there's any scholars listening to this, <laughs> I'm using the, the liberty and license of the poet, <laughs> as I would invite others to do as well and invite him. So here is what Bowen would like to share in this space. Goddess Bowen. Goddess of the river Boyne. I am Bowen. Goddess of the ancient river Boyne. Bowen. Awen means river in Irish, and it also means little cow. I am part of the Tuha Dei Danan, this tribe that worshipped the goddess Danu. And though I know they worshipped me too, my river has seen many a celebration, many a journey and many a battle over the centuries. I am the illuminated cow. The rising and setting sun casts his glorious rays across the fields, illuminating our beautiful cows grazing. It's a very gorgeous and mystical sight. I am the great seer with a visionary gift of sight. I am the great fertile and earthly mother. I am white, bright river. I am primordial, goddess of land and sea. The wisdom giving cow is attributed to me. These gentle cows draw strength from me, drinking from my waters and becoming wise, wiser. I am the archetypal feminine river goddess. I flow lovingly, eternally, caressing the banks of the land, gifting nourishment, food, life, sustenance to my people. I provided vital forms of travel for our many visitors who flocked magnetically to the great monuments at Newgrange, Brew Nebonia, and on to the Hill of Tara from Ireland's ancient east to the center of the land. I remind you of your center, your sovereignty and your power. At the source of my river is a sacred well called Trinity Well, the power of tr three. It's said it cures failing eyesight so that we maybe even wiser seers. My waters create a natural boundary between this world and the other world. So I, Bowen, 
am of the other world and I am out of this world. I am the free spirited goddess to go with the flow of my desires. It's said that Dagda, the sun god, the mighty and powerful, he holds these big rocks across my rivers to build a great monument at Newgrange. Brew Nibonia, meaning the mansion of bone, but also the womb of bone. And we had the most beautiful union at winter solstice time within the chambers of this ancient monument within my wombs where his sun and his rays shone through the darkness as new life was born. And from these seeds, Angus, Angus Oak, my son was born. But I am also the rebel goddess because I went to the sacred well, the well of Segus, that was said to be for men only. And as I gazed into the watery wells, there was awakening of her feminine watery powers. And that is how the water gushed up to flow free once again to create the River Boyne, my namesake. But I am also cosmic because my rivers flow from heaven to earth connecting the moon and the Milky Way to the earth. My sacred river is said to flow from the mystical cow. And my message for you today is to go with your flow, to remember your feminine power as she dances with your masculine power so that we may unite again and step forth in love in this new way for her, our mother earth. Bowen has spoken. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Ema. That was really a, a magical journey there. And I love this invitation to go with the flow of your desires. Mm. Right. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, as a mother yourself, I mean, obviously, everybody taking part right now, you, they're not, we're not all just mothers, right? There'll be men and women and non-binary and some with children and some without. But I do think that in this world, there can be so many barriers that the mind puts up as reasons as to why we just can't go with what we really need and want. I can't follow the flow. You know, what would happen in my life? And no, I know that my mind has given so many of those and it's normal from the way that we've been conditioned in the world. There's certain things that you have to do and certain ways you have to be. And none of it's true. Not really. It isn't. And this is a time when we're remaking our world. So we need the boldness. And we need the courage and we need to honor that, that inner flow. At times, regardless of what we, our head says will, will, will happen. But and when there's people depending on us and particularly children how do we navigate that so if you had somebody here saying this this thing I know I need to do but what about my kids or how do I start this journey what might you say to them yeah <clears throat> so the first thing that's coming to mind is that we invite them in they are part of this flow and part of this story and when I think of more recent events that have really helped guide me and 
guide me on this trajectory. It's actually been events where I've been with my family, which is so intriguing that Mm. as much as I would sometimes like to go off into this solitary, silent world, actually within the chaos and all that's happening and occurring, these magical events happen with the tribe, with the family in tow. And there's a lovely one, speaking of the cow goddess and Bowen, we had the most sacred of sacred encounters. It was two years ago when we were in lockdown and I'd somehow managed to get all my kids out together for a walk. (laughs) And we went over to the woods to the ropes, the secret rope rope swing in the woods. And as we were there, my daughter noticed a cow lying down and she was saying, is that that cow dead or or dying? Is she okay? So we went closer and we realized she was giving birth. (gasps) (laughs) It was just, oh, it just gives me tingles still. She was giving birth and the calf was just coming out, was just being birthed. And it was incredible as the cow was birthing and we kept, there was a fence between us, but we kept a distance, but we all crouched down and we're like, you know, let's, let's watch this unfold, this amazing event that we have happened upon just now. The cow was birthing and in her, in her pain, but in her courage and strength, she hollered out, she bellowed. And next minute, other cows in the field came down too and surrounded her. It was honestly, it was like, wow, this is amazing. In, ca- in sisterhood, in sisterhood, the cow sisterhood supporting their sister to birth this new life into the world and the calf was born in the sack came out like this calf alien and then the each of the cows actually helped to release the calf and to nudge the calf to to come to life but also it was then that I noticed there was also a bull in the field that had also come over So it was like this sacredness of the feminine and the cow, but also with the presence of the bull and the masculine there as well. So we were out in nature on a walk and then nature was teaching us as a family Mm. in whatever way we wanted to receive those those messages. Mm. Um, So yeah, I hope that helps in in some yeah. way and how we can how we can be and be ourselves and share the stories with our children mm-hmm. share our experiences mm-hmm. and speak our truth f- mm-hmm. for ourselves and for them yeah absolutely that's so beautiful and when I hear you saying it I get this this image of the, the sacred mandala of humanity, how we are all just one piece in this huge thing. So of course, when we set ourselves free or when we make the choices that serve ourselves, of course, it ripples out and our children see that and they feel that. And... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's like never underestimating the power of these experiences Mm -hmm. even if they're rolling their eyes and wanting to get back home to their (laughs) to their gadgets or whatever Mm -hmm. that the power of these experiences and the stories that we speak and share yeah carry on through our lineage yeah of course of course thank you for bringing these tales and stories and this I want to say the words woven energy that you bring I see all these like green weaves of natural materials and it's just beautiful Ima Um, and you have a free gift 
so that people can connect more with you. Could you tell us what that is? Yes. So it came through very strongly that I was to offer this free gift, particularly for your summit, for this summit. And it's a writing series every year, actually, for the last five years, I've been taking part in this. It's a writing challenge and you write for 21 weekdays. And it is a challenge because you're invited to dig deep and really share what is alive for you. So this is a series I wrote this time last year, and it explores the topic of the spiral path of place. And it invites you to go on a journey on this spiral. Well, firstly, step on the spiral path of your own becoming Mm -hmm. and to journey with me through the stories and through the stories. My hope is that it awakens this inspiration, this resonance, this gold within you Mm -hmm. and each person that receives that. So when you sign up, you'll receive a PDF with the stories and I've also included a link in there where I recite or read the stories Mm -hmm. live on YouTube so you can Mm -hmm. sink in to to those wonderful yeah yeah and also the 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 witches make an appearance I feel I can't um you know (sighs) I'm, I must mention the witches as well, but they, <laughs> yes. their story also <laughs> yeah. makes an appearance yeah. in the writing series as well. Yeah, 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 gosh. S- such a rich gift there. So you can click the link beneath this video, everyone, and claim that. How wonderful. And um... <laughs> yeah, I feel like now I can't believe that we haven't discussed the witches. <laughs> but, but you know, guys, if you go into Ema's website, you can also find the link for that. You, you'll, find, you'll find more of what we're talking about here. And I'll, I'll just simply say that it's, to me, it speaks of another piece of the, the beautiful heart-centered boldness that you bring to this world, Ema. And I'm um, so grateful that you're in it supporting us to really embrace who we are and um on that note everyone let's take a few breaths back into the body simply to see what's here what's arisen so you may want to let your eyes close or just let them rest with a soft gaze or just take a minute here and oh letting your breath drop back down noticing that you're breathing once more. And noticing as your breath combs through your body, perhaps you're seeing the rise and the fall of the belly or how it's moving other parts of you. Allowing yourself to notice this physical manifestation of your soul in this moment, what is alive in your body. Whether you're noticing that you don't quite know. Or whether you're noticing sensation or emotion. whether you can still feel that presence of the gold that Ema guided us to connect with. And just noticing what is alive in your soul song in this moment as we've journeyed with practice and story and discussion. Now what is alive in your soul song How is it expressing in your body? And if you were to really let this soul song roll out into your day like an ocean, how would it guide you? How will it guide you? 
So radically embodied you is you living easily and utterly from the truth in your body. And I invite you to let any inspiration that you've received in this session today really support you to let your soul song have wings, let it take space, honour your truth today. Knowing that truly when you do, you are serving everything and everyone else in the natural world and you are birthing pieces of our new world. And maybe you can stay present for a while longer with your body now. I invite you to stay here in this somatic space as long as time allows. And if you do need to come back into perhaps a more logical or even just open-eyed space, I invite you to, again, yeah, as Ema guided us before, bring a bit of movement to the feet and the hands. Let some light be blinked into the eyes. Ema, it's been really inspiring to spend this time with you today. Thank you for bringing your energy here. You're so welcome. I have tingles all over. I just feel this gorgeous healing vibration in this conversation that we've had. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you mm -hmm. for bringing this forth in such a radical and beautiful way. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Mm, wonderful, everyone. So I am wishing you a beautiful onward journey with the radically embodied you. <laughs> Inviting you to keep letting them out in as fierce or as gentle a way as you need. And I'll see you soon.